Welcome to episode 5.1. We're talking the film The Dark Tower. We also talk about the Dark Tower comic book series from Marvel Comics and the director of Kong Skull Island's Beef with Cinema Sins. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to your doom. Welcome to your doom. like a retelling of Bram Stoker's Dracula with Eddie Murphy <laughs> and in Brooklyn, in Brooklyn. And, st- and like modern day Brooklyn. I'm guessing this is a comedy. Yeah, it's like a, it's a horror comedy. Right. It's directed by Wes Craven. It's like oh, a really cool. weird combination that didn't quite work, but... 80s or 90s? 90s. Yeah, strange. It was an ambitious attempt. Yeah. Hey guys, we're back. Another episode of Welcome to Your Doom. This is Justin. This is Atul, and we have a special guest here with us today, Sudeep Gate that rhymes with latte, which <laughs> is right. what he told me before in order to remember how to pronounce his last name. Sudeep is a friend of my wife's <laughs> oh, she and, this introduction. and mine. <laughs> I put I put that in there for you, Shagu, because they were friends first and then Sudeep and I started hanging out and there's well, a little trouble of brewing over, you know, relationship rights. That's to the friend. Women are strange about that. Yeah, it happens. It happens. So, Shogu, I'd like you to know that I introduced him as your friend first, for the record. Despite um, how awkward it makes the introduction. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. That's true. I suppose. A little. Uh, <laughs> ah, yeah, I suppose. This is a guy who's not my friend, but my wife's friend, and... And it's weird. He's not my friend. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so the reason uh, uh, we invited Sudeep is that he uh, and I started reading The Dark Tower around the same time. And uh, Sudeep, being a much more proficient reader than I am, finished The Dark Tower and I'm still on the second last book. So, um, Sudeep, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself and what you've been reading lately. You've been, you've been doing a lot of reading, right? So, I have, actually. Yeah. <clears throat> um, actually, just finished... Uh, brief History of Seven Killings, which is, uh, i trying to remember the author's name, uh, James, Elmer James, Elmer James, I think. I've heard that name before. Um, yeah, it won the Man Booker Prize a couple of years ago. It's so actually a really fascinating book. It's kind of a fictional recount of the time when there was an assassination. Oh, and this is Bob Marley. Bob Marley assassination, right. right. So it right. Kind of, it's yeah. giving you the perspective of different characters who were involved in that assassination. It's all fictional, but yeah. it was based on a lot of real life characters. Did they do any research at all into like what actually? Like, oh, actually, absolutely. Or did he just not not into what actually happened that day, but into like any inv- actual investigation? Are the characters real or are they? They're based on real characters. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So and okay. it was a kind of a political attempt a political hit sure. so to speak because um there were two parties two political parties who were kind of going at it and they were using um mafias to kind of fight their wars for them right and there was an election coming up around that time and bob marley was staging a peace concert oh that's right yeah no i remember and right. this happened yeah. two days before the concert right and he survived and he performed yeah um which was a big deal at the time right so <clears throat> the book kind of revolves around that and then the repercussions of that assassination attempt and then years later what happened to those characters who were involved in that assassination attempt. Okay. Because Bob Marley died a few years later but because of cancer anyway. Right, that's right. right. Cool, so you, you, you finished that I book. just literally Did finished it Did you finish yesterday. that? Was that like a two-day read? Or <laughs> it was, was like that? a week long maybe. It was a week? A yeah. 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 So the Dark Tower are like 700-page <clears throat> books. Like how long did it take you to eat one of those books? Well, each... The books were kind of varying lengths, right? But I think the whole seven book series, eight books actually, if you count uh, Wind in the Keyhole. Wind in the Keyhole, yeah, um, okay. I think I finished it in like two months. Two months. It takes me like four months to finish one of these books. So, um, so <laughs> oh, quick. I was obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't stop reading. So, so uh, quick, quick thing, like you have some favorite comics, right? We've talked about this before. You're a comic book reader, right? Yeah. Like what are some of your favorite books or your favorite runs that you've done or um, that you've done that you've read? Long Halloween, Dark Victory. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tim Sale. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Jeff Loeb. Jeff Loeb, that's right, yeah. yeah. 
I'm trying to think. Obviously, uh, killing. Sorry, killing. Joe. Trying to get him to talk louder and, yeah. and speak into the mic. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, killing joke. You said. Yeah, yeah. a lot of uh, Batman. I'm noticing films, a pattern. I would yeah. Say, yeah, I'm noticing a pattern. Um, Alan, Alan Moore. Yeah. Anything like Watchmen or um, V for Vendetta. Okay. You so really did you read Swamp Thing Run too? If you ever, if you ever, I, you know, I videos. haven't gone like to Swamp Thing. I, it's a pretty massive read. Right? It is, yeah. He it's, did a pretty long a, run. It, 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 it <clears> got <throat> to a point like he did a lot of. It seemed I, I haven't read all of them, but it seemed like he kind of went into like a really far out kind of weird place. Okay. But then he totally took the character and turned him one eighty. Like huh. it was a completely different kind of character. They went to the point where he. <sighs> Actually, I don't know if I want to spoil things. I mean, you kind of know where it goes, right? Uh, you know what? I haven't read Alan Moore's run. On I'll leave it thing. alone then. Yeah. The big, yeah, the big reveal is really, if you don't know what happens, it's yeah. actually a really, really interesting take. So I'll leave it alone. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that's something we can talk about on the next podcast. I'm, I'm cool with that. Podcast. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to read uh, Alan Moore, like Moore's Swamp Thing. It's um, wacky. Some of it's yeah. wacky. But. Yeah. Uh, any other books, like non-DC, anything that you've read that... Uh, Trying to think. Um, off the top of my head, I can't really remember. I right probably now. should have told you that we were going to ask give you a freaking <laughs> book report. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Oh my God. Yeah. Let me see what Sorry. I've read. Yeah. Go through my history. Actually, I can go and go to <laughs> check it out. So <laughs> Nib's just come from a pretty rough day with very little preparation. Drove from Ottawa. Uh, Ottawa. 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 It's the town of otters. <laughs> <laughs> I do that so often on this show. <laughs> just totally, completely mangle words that you just jump all over my shit for. So I wait. Thank you. I wait. Thank you. Me. You're waiting in the. You're waiting in the bushes to spring on these. <laughs> yeah, I think you said a uh, ship snail last time. Sna- yes. <laughs> yeah. Solar yeah. snails. Solar yeah. snails. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was convinced. I did not say that, but I listened to the recording and I did in yeah, fact say true. that. So, um, yeah. So, uh, so what we'll do is. Um, with Sudip's help, we're gonna our boss battle today is gonna be the Dark Tower. I was about to say the Dark Knight, the Dark Tower. Um, uh, but first, I wanted to jump into one piece of news, and we'll try to keep it short because there are three of us for the movie, and we're all gonna have stuff to say. Um, the one thing I did want to talk about quickly was a piece of news that I thought was pretty interesting. Um, there's a lot of interesting news in the last you know few weeks, but. This one really caught my eye because it brings something uh, to the forefront that I feel I, I kind of feel strongly about. Um, I don't know how to pronounce this director's name properly, so I'm going to go for it and we'll we'll see how I do. Jordan Vote Roberts, V O G T. Um, I think that's how you uh, pronounce his name. Uh, he's the director of Kong Skull Island, and recently Cinema Sins. Uh, which is the YouTube group that does the everything wrong with film in under 14 minutes or or whatever, uh, basically a time limit. And they go they go through the movie, and this guy, the the narrator, I don't know his name, he he uh, basically just proceeds to rip the movie a new one in terms of logic, like almost purely based on like logic and and editing and like and actually he he. Um, he goes into everything. Actually, it's not just logic. It's like the, the like you know shot like framing and like music selection. It's it's everything. It's it's like nothing's off limits to this guy's uh, to this guy's uh, uh, critiquery. Yeah, that is not a word. Um, Close enough. Critique. Yeah, critiquing. I suppose. Um, so they just released their Kong Skull Island one, which I haven't seen yet. I haven't seen the movie, I haven't seen and I haven't. Seen oh, you it. haven't seen it. So, have you seen well, Kong? Seen oh man! All right. Well, actually, it's kind of a fun movie. I'm not a huge, huge fan, but I, you know, I enjoyed my time at the theater. Uh, you know, I want it to wasn't see it at some point. So, yeah, yeah, it wasn't. Not, I haven't written it off. It's just I haven't had a shot at uh, watching it yet. Yeah, I don't think it's anything to write home about, but it's worth it's worth checking out. A lot of cool like monster effects and stuff like that, which I, you know, I'm totally I'm totally in for. So, Jordan Voit Vo- 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 Roberts uh, actually responded to uh, Cinema Sins, and he actually went into a pretty lengthy tirade. Um, he's obviously... Limited to 120 characters or less. Yes. <laughs> In each response. Yes. Oh, God. Yeah, you know, Twitter's just making these things really awkward. That's what it's doing. All these tirades, it's, it's splitting it up. It's, just like, it's basically like agile software delivery for a tirade. <laughs> little... P- little little functional short control bursts. <laughs> increments. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
Yeah, so like the first thing he says, is our Cinema Sins video is out. What Ryan said is how I feel. These videos are now the length of TV pilots where people tell actual stories. The first seven minutes of uh, reflect the entire range of human emotions. These schmucks wait, waste 18 minutes of your life with no artistic value. Mystery Science Theater built something artful, endearing, and comedic on top of the foundation of other people's work. Uh, it had merit to itself. Things like Cinema Sins simply suck the lifeblood of other people and are often just wrong about intent or how cinema works. It's terrible. And then he proceeds to go into a series of examples, still frames from the Cinema Sins video. And uh, and when the Cinema Sins guy is like sort of commenting over top of the movie, there's a there's a, a subtitles for like for his his what he's saying. So it captures what he's saying, and then Roberts is basically. Uh, arguing against what he said. Yeah. So I find this really, really fascinating. Do you have any thoughts? Jump in. Jump I okay. So just to go back to Cinema Sins alone, I've stopped. I think I might have unsubscribed. I, I so I was never a subscriber. Yeah. I watched some of their videos and I stopped as well. I stopped a long time ago. He, it, why, why did you stop? This is an interesting question because I actually thought it was to the point where it's like almost mean spirited. Like yes. I just didn't. I did not enjoy it. It wasn't funny. Yeah. It was it was almost uh, the word maybe the word is a little strong and I'm not trying to be aggressive but pathetic. Mm-hmm. I think is the word I'm looking for where yeah. it's just like being an armchair critic. It's actually the worst type mm-hmm. of like armchair critic where yeah. you just sit there and it's just easy to shit on movies. I think it's really easy to I think it's really easy for people to hate stuff. I think that's um, well, that's t- typically I my personal feeling is that disliking something it's always okay to dislike something but to like something is a little more of a dangerous proposition uh, given you know the properties given especially that sort of geek culture right. properties that we deal with right, right. Sure. Um, so I stopped watching it just because I thought you know I it's mean spirited it's it's dumb it wasn't funny. And uh, I, I think something like uh, Honest Trailers yeah. is funny. I think yes. they add some value. I think it pokes fun at itself. Yeah. I think it can compart- <clears throat> I think it, to a certain extent it can compartmentalize its feelings about film. And it could say, it could say something funny about the movie. Yeah. It could, you know, I think they went a little too far with Alien Covenant. We can talk about that one later. But, uh, but yeah, I know, I know, I know you didn't, you didn't like it. I don't think um, I've seen the Honest Trailer. Yeah. <laughs> I, Have you I, ever I, seen an Honest Trailer? No, no, no. For, for Alien Covenant. Covenant. They yeah. just came out. Like a week, it came out just after we. Yeah, I think it was like literally two days after. Okay, yeah, which was funny because they were saying a lot of the same stuff. Some guy was anyway, many many names, (laughs) anyways. But you know what? This sorry, go ahead. ahead. No, 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 go ahead. No, this whole thing it reminds me of honest trailers because they do do it in a different spirit. They're they're actually just having fun with it, and they know that everyone else knows that they're having fun with it. Right. And on the flip side, they actually so when they did um, Winter Soldier, yeah. Um, the directors actually said that they were trying to make a movie that would be honest trailer proof. <laughs> yeah. like they actually kept that in mind. Did they have? They even had a reaction, right? Well, the and Russo then they brothers, brought them in. Yeah, for so. yeah. the honest yeah. trailer itself. Yeah. So they aired it to them, yeah. and they were asking them for their reaction. So yeah. then the show was like, okay, hold on, pause. Let me just say like what I was trying to do here and why you guys think this is funny, but what the actual intent was. Right. So they went through the honest trailer frame by frame. And then picked apart picked the apart. honest trailer. Sure, yeah. yeah right? So they gave the directors a chance yeah. to critique the honest trailer itself. Sure. And that is, you know, like you said, it's there's no mean spirit in that. It's yeah. just them having fun with it. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Whereas Absolutely. I haven't ever seen um, cinema since, but it does sound like they're pretty much just shitting on yeah. movies, and that's pretty much all they, they like to They're do. digging yeah. so deep into the technical making of a film or like artistic merit, and like uh, and uh, Roberts goes into a lot of the details here. Um, there looks to be like twenty or thirty tweets. Yeah, just scrolling uh, yeah, down. There, there's, there may be there's a lot. There's a lot. no, no. It's not. Tw- um, there's it's, a lot. It's quite a few. Yeah, there's quite a few. The ones with the freeze the freeze frames in them. I think yeah. there's like six. And at or the seven. end, he says, "I'm not mad." <laughs> he does. He does say that. He says, "I'm not. I'm not mad." Um, I yeah, think he's bro. a little pissed off. I but what think he? So. I think. Uh, I, I think that he. Shouldn't be. I think he's made of like a serviceable film. I, it's not my. It's not my favorite, but he does stuff in that movie that I really, really like. Um, but I think Cinema Sins at large, like these kind of critiquing um, channels on YouTube, 
some of them have merit. Like some of them have like artistic merit. They actually try and break stuff down and, mm-hmm. and uh, not even break stuff down. It's more of they aren't filmmakers. No. They don't pretend to be filmmakers. I think Honest Trailers doesn't pretend to be – they don't pretend to be directors, right? Right. They, for, f- they take the film at sort of face value and they have some fun with it like you said. Yep. Cinema Sins digs into that next layer. This is kind of like this filmmaker dropout yeah. who is just like, oh, you know, it's obvious you should have done this and you did this. That's a dumb thing. The, you know, like, the, the thing is, is – so there's two things. One, inherently, it starts off negative because it's the title of it is yes. what is r- this is everything that's wrong with it. It right. starts off with a negative. It's an attack. It's an attack. It's an attack right, right from the beginning. Sin. But the yeah. earlier videos did it better because it went from everything wrong with such and such movie in four minutes or three minutes or five minutes. Yeah. But then it started getting to six, seven, nine. 15, yeah, like 17, 15, yeah. 20. It's like, what right. the fuck? I'm not looking to hear you t- pick apart a movie. I can watch a movie and know whether it's good or bad. And if you're spending 24 minutes on it, I, I don't know what the records are, but I'm pretty sure I've seen some either close to or over 20 minutes. Yeah. I don't need 20 minutes to be told what's wrong with a movie. If you're telling me stuff for 20 minutes, either it's either a bad film or you are real. Like they did, I think, 17 minutes on John Wick 2. I don't know. I, I had no way. And I saw that. I saw right. that pop up like or something. On John Wick like, 2. I have no inclination to watch. I don't understand how they're racking views up because I have no inclination Dude, to watch that. The, the at Kong one's all. at two two plus million. Which one? Kong. Kong. Well, you know, I think Jordan Roberts has a lot to do with it. I don't know, man. There's a problem. Like by tweeting this, he's just feeding into what sure. they're looking for. True. He's driving True. traffic to their video now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But. At the same time, he's also defending his own work, which he's, he has an equal right to do. He, do, he does. He does. I I don't think he's achieving what he thinks he's achieving I by doing I, this. I don't think he should have done anything. No. I don't think it's not in that anything. medium. I think he should have approached them to get on their show and talk about it or something yeah. like that. Yeah. That would have been more interesting. But this just seems desperate and like he's got, he's got very thin skin. It's, it's very defensive. Yeah. It, seemed, it seemed very defensive and very... I don't know, childish, I'd say. Well, we live in a... I, I get sorry, it. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I was going to say I get it, yeah. but, but the, the <clears throat> I think there's a better way to go about what he what he was trying to accomplish there. Sure. Well, I mean, it really depends on what he was trying to accomplish. That's I true. Think yeah. that, I think if he was trying to be like, okay, I want to expose cinema sins, and I want people to understand what they do and, um, isn't the final word. Yeah. Like, there are intentions for the way these films are built, and I will contextualize those choices and uh, I'll do that by going on their show and talk about like the Russo brothers did for uh, Honest Trailers um, which I think obviously is a different case because I think Honest Trailers was very is not an attack no. Honest Trailers is ne- does, doesn't start off as an attack no. on any film right it critiques um, it to some degree and it'll shit on movies if it does something poorly but it doesn't nitpick it doesn't twist the knife yeah no, that's, that's what I would say with yes, Cinema that's Sins what, yeah, right yeah. Yeah. like Alien Covenant yeah it was a pretty rough one like it, it it hit all the points that everybody's been kind of shitting on the film about but it's still funny like you could still watch like you, you I can still enjoy it. Alien that's, that's, Covenant after seeing well did you enjoy watching the honest trailer for it I I'll be honest with you not as much as the others because I didn't agree with a, like I just didn't agree <laughs> yes. with a lot of it like and you know he was talking about like the, the generally I have an opinion on the you know the Alien Legacy like the series and they're saying now there are as many bad Alien sequels as there are or like whatever and I was like I don't I don't think that's you don't agree true. with that but you gotta you have to. I think you have to somewhat concede that that is the opinion of. Oh, that's a general opinion. Yes. yes. So, yes. so I have I, very strong yeah. feelings about the Alien franchise, and yeah. that colors my opinion of the Honest Trailer. Sure, sure, sure. Trailer. Yeah. Um, but but uh, so so like so like you said, we were saying, you know, what was that his intention? I don't think so. I think this is a knee jerk reaction. He's he's pissed. Yeah. He wants to show people that there is context context for a lot of these changes, and he does it. And I think he, I think he makes a good argument for each of the examples that he puts on. But that's not going to win this. That's not going to expose Cinema Sins for being the sort of schlocky, uh, mean spirited group of folks that they can be sometimes, right? I, I think he should have not done it through Twitter. I think it yeah, yeah, no, that's what I mean. Or yeah. it should have been it should a have video. been more controlled. This yeah. was an uncontrolled. It was an outburst. I think this was an outburst. It's yeah. a reaction. It's a yeah, knee-jerk reaction. but I mean, if he's knee jerk reactioning, reactioning, reacting. Um, or reactioning, whatever you just, like. Just, you know, instead of hitting send every 120 characters, just put it into one 
easy yeah, digestible like medium yeah. instead of a bunch of an open letter. Yeah, yeah an open, open letter. letter I think that's better. Yeah. Um, oh man, I forgot what I was gonna say. Oh, uh, what I was gonna, oh, the other thing I was gonna say. Jordan Roberts, we live in a crazy time. We got all of these directors who have done indie films, like small films, and they their next movie is a gigantic one, right? Two names that come to mind, uh, Jurassic World, the guy who directed that, uh, Colin Trevorrow, he did a much, a much smaller drama before that. Oh, man, and I can't remember what it was. Uh, but uh, I think Spielberg or someone saw it. And uh, they're like, hey, you know what? We should get this guy to direct. It doesn't make any sense. If you look at his filmography, it's just like, uh, oh, so safety not guaranteed. That's what he That's what he directed. I don't know if oh. you ever saw that. But, Keep meaning and, to. And then, list. then directed Jurassic World. Huh. Jordan Roberts did a movie that I really enjoyed called Kings of Summer about a bunch of kids that just like run away from home and build like a, a treehouse like cabin thing in the woods all summer. And it's a very sort of... Uh, it's it's a drama it's a dramedy kind of story and it's it's a great personal coming of age story and then he did Kong, so you're looking at these like guys who who did really small movies and then massive films right, you don't see this type of reaction from like a seasoned blockbuster director yeah well that's because they're I'm, too busy counting I'm, their money <laughs> yeah, curious, Steven Spielberg's like oh you didn't like my movie yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go sleep on my bed of cash I'll see yeah. you later <laughs> while I make another movie for yeah. you to pick up our sure yeah. Um, Who's the Ryan he's talking about? Is he talking about Ryan Johnson? Oh, in the tweet? Yeah. I don't know. It could be. It just it says, be. what Ryan said is how I feel. I'm oh, yeah. No, I don't know. About. Yeah, I have no idea how Twitter works. <laughs> <laughs> so I fucking... Like, no, I, like, he when I see a tweet well, no, and it has all those crazy Ryan. tags and like retweeted and shit, I get lost in there and I have no idea where I ended up. It is Ryan Johnson, actually. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Who is another filmmaker. Who jumped from a very small film yeah. to an extremely large... I wouldn't call Looper a small no, but drama, Brick but... pretty small. Brick was tiny. Yeah. Brick, and what? Looper, if anything, I would say is the bigger one. But I, I think Ryan Johnson's <clears throat> rise was a little more gradual because Brick was a fantastic film. Oh, yeah. It was great. Yeah. And then he did the uh, the Brothers, Brothers Bloom, Bloom That's right. which is a, a slightly larger film. Yeah. Then he did Looper, which is a larger science fiction movie. And now he's doing Star, Star Wars, Wars, right? So I think that was a nice... I, I feel enough. like that was a nice gradual... Yeah. But, but going yeah. from the Kings of Summer to Kong, mm-hmm. that is just like... That line is uh, nearly vertical. Yeah. That jump, you know? Yep. So I think like a lot of that... N- newness to yeah. that to the, to that type of genre, right? Is is I think that's coming out here, and, right? and that could be it. So like a lot of these big name directors, they're used to all kinds of criticism, but in the end, you know, they look at their box office performance. After a while, they don't really care about the reviews. So <laughs> right. They just have a thicker skin because of that, right? Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> if you've made, but think about the space you're playing in, right? Mm-hmm. You make a movie like Kings of Summer. You're playing in an art sort of a, like drama, like artistic sort of space. Uh, you know, like. Film festival space, I guess you would say. Yeah. Small film, right? <clears throat> you play, you you jump into King Kong, one of the most prominent science fiction fantasy properties ever, right? This thing has fans that are, you know, that go, that for years, decades, decades. these people have been fans, right, of this property. And you jump into there, you're getting a whole different world of criticism, a whole different world of people watching you. Watching your box office, yeah. you know, cr- critiquing you. Will Kings of Summer ever be on Cinema Sins? Never. No. Might now. Of- <laughs> <laughs> you know, Cinema like, Sins. Retrospect. I do not want to take credit for Kings of <laughs> just, Summer. Just to Cinema Sins. Like you didn't like it, eh? Uh, <laughs> Kings of Summer. Everything wrong. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> forty-two minutes. <laughs> You're setting a record. No, that's forget forty-two minutes. Just make it exactly the length of Kings of Summer, the film. Oh god! Yeah. Oh that's man, it. I think he would lose his shit. Um, but uh, but yeah, so he's playing in a whole different world, I think, and it's just this is new stuff, and he's yeah. reacting, and and I get it, I get it, but in the end, I you know hindsight's well, it's easy for us to say, calm down. Yeah. Yeah. Don't just let it slide. Just, it's not going to work. Oh, like, yeah. What you're going to do is not going to work. It's he's going to do what he's going to do. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. do I fault him for it? Not really. No, I don't. I, I think it could have been handled better, but I totally get it. I absolutely yeah, understand. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Any other thoughts on Cinema Sins? No, but I'm, I am very curious. I've never seen any of the Cinema Sins. So I, 
Okay. Yeah, yeah, well, you should check it out. I'll see well, plenty of... Uh, maybe. I'm not. It's worth, it's, it's worth checking out just so you know. some of the older stuff. The older stuff is more entertaining. Yeah. Because it's more digestible content. But, like, if you ask me to sit down for a 17-minute thing, it better be entertaining. Oh, that's what I like about Honest Trailers. It's literally like a trailer. Four or five it's, minutes. Yeah. I can sit down and watch it with my wife, and yeah. she doesn't want to watch any of this shit. So <laughs> I can sit down and be like, Nish, they, they just put out a Guardians of the Galaxy 2. We couldn't watch it fast well, enough. the second one? Okay. Yeah. I would say that. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Well, uh, I think that did you, was there anything else? I think no. Nah, I think we'll keep it short and uh, go straight into this boss battle. All right. You ready? Hey, Justin. Oh God. Hey, Atul. Do you know that there are other worlds than these? No. Shut up and eat your goddamn <laughs> rabbit. <laughs> this is the Dark Tower. <laughs> That's right. Oh my god. How <laughs> So did, there Did you look up these quotes or you remember No, I just it? no, I remember the quote from the movie because it st- it stood out so much to, to me. When, no, 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 he it. says like he asks him a question and, he, and like Idris Elba just kind of looks at him and he says, "Eat your rabbit." <laughs> I don't know, do you remember that line? From yeah, that? I do. <laughs> Cuz you don't remember that? I cuz I remember I saw it I was like <laughs> it was weird. I was <laughs> desperately hoping he was going to say something of meaning and he didn't. He didn't, yeah. He just, it was like, it was going to lead up to some kind of explanation. He just kind of looks over. He's like, eat your rabbit. It's kind of a <laughs> running theme with that movie, but yeah. we'll yeah. get to that after. All right, just for the record, <laughs> the other one that I had written down, I'll okay. tell you what it was. If the Gunslinger's Creed was changed to never take a hot steaming dump on the face of your father, this movie may have actually not turned out the way it did. Oh, my God. <laughs> Was that better? That was, was better. Yes, we that could, was better. We could, <laughs> we could, we could edit this up and change. I, I was it. thinking of something a little more PG thirteen, and the the director truly forgot the face of oh, his father. Oh, I <laughs> see. See, a little uh, more subtle. I had, I had, but then one. it was giving an opinion that I didn't like the film. Yeah, right, right. I'm trying to stay away from that. Right. But, uh, anyway, Dark Tower. So I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we'll start there. What did you guys think overall? Did you enjoy you? it? Yeah. Let's start with you. Well, uh, this is so. This is the non-spoiler edition. So, so just so general, general, general. Yeah. Uh, so leaving comment. aside the fact that I've read the books, and you know, you kind of have an expectation going into a movie that's based on a book that we're gonna try to follow a certain um, story, an overarching Essence. story. Yeah. Yeah. At least stick to the themes of it. So, I try to go in with, into the movie with an open mind. Let's just forget that I've read the books. Um, in my opinion, obviously, if I did not like it at all, um, and there were various reasons for that, but that, <clears throat> um, quite a few of them just to do with, there were, I don't even want to say plot holes. It was just a lack of explanation revolving around the main story. Right. It's just random tidbits kind of thrown out for really the diehard Stephen King fans who may or may not get it, but that contribute nothing to the story. Right. Um, it was just kind of like a Stephen King product placement movie. <laughs> that's what it yeah, was. Yeah. Right, yeah. It's like, oh, that's referring to that book. Oh, I guess I should go read that book. Oh, that's not from another book. That's from another I should book know that, that book has book a too. movie, yeah. which is better than this one. I will watch that. <laughs> it was. Um, and leaving aside that it's supposed to be an action movie that lacked very good action. Yeah. It, uh, there weren't very many. I, there's a lot. There's a pacing problem with Three. that movie. There's pacing problems. The best <clears throat> action scene did not involve the gunslinger. Yeah, that's the thing. That's my takeaway, and I'll, I'll we'll we'll get, we'll into, get into that. Yeah, later. I think I, that, I think I know exactly what you're talking about. Probably, I have yeah. a bullet for that. Yeah. But anyway, um, so that's so that's a general opinion from yeah, yeah. from uh, someone who's read all of the books. So I've read only up to song four. Is it song four, Susanna? Or if, if, if it's an album, yeah. <laughs> Songs of Susanna. <laughs> Songs of Susanna. Yeah, like, Song which four? Is, I don't know. Anyway, it's the second four? No, no, that's what the title of the second the second oh. last book is. See, I haven't read any of them. <laughs> <laughs> so leading into the fact that Justin hasn't read any. So right. like, you know, let's hear what you go. Justin can't read. <laughs> so <laughs> so what's funny about this is I'm actually listening to the audiobook of the first one right now, just because I'm constantly on the go or doing cardio. I can't do cardio without watching or listening to something at the gym. So sure, I yeah. will throw that on. I've been listening to The Gunslinger, which wow. is a little long and drawn out, but it's not 
I think it's a little easier to digest when you're when you're listening to it when someone's basically reading it. Oh to yeah, you for sure. I bet. Uh, so my consumption of the <coughs> all of the books has been through audio. Audio. Oh really? Yeah, thought, okay, all audio books. Okay. I haven't been. So reading. we both he's can't read, read them. I yeah. Oh, wait, I can't read either. Yeah. So you can read. We can't. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, That's right. In terms of so my thoughts on it was that yes it was it was the longest and shortest movie I've seen in a long time yeah. because it was there was it was a very short runtime but there was so little in the film that was relevant yeah. to a plot yeah. like there was just constantly like they were constantly going on switching from the A story to the B story back and forth back and forth but the B story really didn't need to be much more than just kind of a quick like oh that's what that is and then you could just you could spend a lot more time developing the characters or developing the environment right and they don't do any of that um, and then general like as soon as he goes to what, what, what's the the bad what's 1919 like what is that world called I know that Midworld Midworld that's called yeah Midworld. or End World I don't know where that yeah, like, Midworld, Midworld, right? Midworld yeah, right. yeah Midworld yeah so when when they go to Midworld all of a sudden lighting and composition goes completely to shit because the stuff that was shot in New York looked a lot better it was easier to digest and, and, and receive you know from the film right but then there were scenes that were filmed far too dark and then there were some that were the the camera was shaking way too much where it was completely really? incoherent yeah. like it was just uh, it was really really hard to oh, to oh grasp I, I know that. what you're talking about yeah, like, I'm sure you do there's the there's a I mean I'm, I don't think this is too much of a spoiler it's in the trailer there's a big you know demon like monster attack scene mm-hmm I had no idea what the hell was going on in that scene. That, 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 Not that's, a clue. Nope. I was yeah, watching exactly. it and I was uh, like, "This is." I was trying to mighty, take into what the hell that the the monster even looked, looked like, like, and I couldn't. Yeah, I, I had couldn't. no idea. All I know is it had a tail. Yeah, and looked that's somewhat what I got insectoid. From it too. Yeah, but, that's what I got from it too. Um, yeah. And then the, then the other thing too is they reveal probably one of the coolest action bits in the film in every friggin' trailer with yeah, the, the, the reloads. The, yeah. And well, like the, there's the reloads and then the, 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 when the, when, uh, when the James, without yeah, without looking. Oh yeah. yeah. That's so, a great, that's a, I thought that was great. And when I saw I the did, trailer, when I saw I like, it in the trailer and then when I saw it, in, in, when I saw it in the <laughs> film, I was like, fuck, I already, already know what it's going to do. This, yeah. And it's, so, the thing is, it's not even a, um, so sometimes what they do for trailers is that action scenes are longer and yeah. they'll chop down the scene to get the sort of gist of what's happening. Mm-hmm. The entire shot is in the trailer. Yeah. Like there's it's not yeah. it's not abbreviated no. and if it is abbreviated it's very very little. Right. It's like the entire thing. So for for an hour and a half film, they put an awful lot of nothing into it. Yeah. Yeah, I I agree. I um <clears throat> I think it's commendable that the film managed to mimic the time dilation effects from the book that it describes into exactly into the film. It's like what you described, the longest and shortest movie I've seen in a long time is a very accurate description of how this, how it felt to watch this movie. Um, and the different worlds, time moves differently. So I don't know, maybe that's what's going on here, but yeah, I agree with most of your points. It's, it's, you know, Okay. I feel the way I feel about this movie is almost exactly the same way I feel about Green Lantern. Green Lantern, the film, basically took the most unique and vibrant comic book property, right? Mainstream comic book property, DC comic book property for that matter, and turned it into a dull, lame, boring, run of the mill film. Yes. And I think that it's that is that that's that movie's biggest downfall is the fact that it is blah. It's yeah. so blah. And this is exactly the same problem with this movie. Uh, like I've read enough of the books to get an understand. I love the books. They're really, the mythology there is great. It's wonderful. And they just they vanilla it up so much. To the point where it's not only that, it's like it be, it, if they made it, they they dumbed everything down and it's dull. And then there was a bad editor. Like on top of that, on top of that whole problem, they, they edit it like the pacing is all off. Right. So I think it's just like it's I, I, I just like shaking my head a lot in the movie where I was like not even from a fan of the books. It's just like even as a fan of science fiction films, yeah. just like, yeah. I think this is like this has been done somewhere else and it's been done better, right? And then introducing the fan of the books, it's like it, you have way more to work with. 
you're way, you are so much more unique. Why did you turn out this way? So, uh, yeah. Also, um, one other question I have for you guys. So the man in black's name is Walter, which yeah. is not a spoiler. It's just, no, they, no. they, that's, yeah. why the fuck do they call him Walter? Leave it alone. You've got one of the coolest villain names ever, the yeah. man in black. Yeah. And that's all they call him. And they're constantly referring to him as like a, like a, but like a, sale, like a hardware salesman. Yeah, like, there, there's <laughs> Walter. Is, oh, I'm good. I don't need a computer today. My other one's working fine. <laughs> oh, but I got to make a sale. Like, that's like, that's Walter to me. And they keep calling him Walter. So there's a, that's another problem with the movie is, um, going back to what I was saying, like, you know, there's a lot of Easter eggs about all of these other Stephen King books. And that itself is a reference to The Stand. Mm-hmm. Because Walter Flagg. No, no, no. No, you know what? It's, it's Randall Flagg. It's Randall Flagg. No, you're right. So, so the Walter thing, O'Dim is the Wal- name. Walter Sorry, O'Dim is the name. Things, yeah. So the thing about the... And this is, again, this is another thing where they... they, sh- they, they it's like, I don't know. It's, it, the, the mythology is so mangled. They try and show it to you, but then they fall flat on their face. Yeah. Or they don't go all the way. They just kind of like... All. Or they, they just... It's, I don't know. I don't know even know how to I think describe it. They it's were like, they were con- confused about their audience as to who they're trying yeah. to make this movie for. It's right. so like, are we doing it for the hardcore Dark Tower fans? Are we doing it for just general Stephen King fans, yeah. or just people who have no clue about any of this stuff? Right. So if that's the case, at least explain something. If it's for the, the hardcore fans, then go deeper into the mythology. Yeah, go instead. Deep, yeah. They just did a little bit for everyone, but it, like you said, it just falls flat. It's just completely yeah, it falls flat. flat. And it's not even... No, you can do that. You can do it. So what I was going to say was uh, Walter Odim and the man in black. And then this guy, Randall Flagg from another Stephen King story. And then he has a couple of other names in the story. And he's actually referred to by all of them. Okay. Like <laughs> at any given point, he was he was referred to that. His name was... His name is Walter... His last name is Odim. I don't know. That's pretty cool. But <laughs> I agree that Walter is probably not <laughs> probably not as name. It doesn't ins- <laughs> it doesn't inspire fear. No, at all. Yeah. If I find out somebody called Walter's coming after me, I'm just gonna grab a pipe or something. <laughs> you know, not gonna have to worry. Yeah. Um, what about performances? Uh, Idris Elba does is just doing the best he can. Yeah. He's doing I, the best he can. He looks bored. <laughs> he looks bored. I okay. So I think he was directed to look bored. Yeah. But that's the thing. Like you've got a guy like Idris Elba, and you're not or Elba. Sorry, I always say Elba. Um, like Jessica Elba. Yeah, exactly. But um, that would have been, been a very Alba. different Jessica gunslinger. Jessica Elba was the gunslinger. man in black. Oh my god. Uh, even better. As a gunslinger. <laughs> oh, as a gunslinger would have been better, but. Um, Her but, is the man in black. but he just looked bored the whole time. Like he yeah. didn't look like he was into it at all. And I think that's like you said. I think that was direction. I don't. Yeah. I don't. That doesn't to me. That's I don't not think he, I think he was like. I'm gonna. I, I think. I think Roland is bored. Well, I'm gonna play <laughs> him that. Way. Well, he no. was wearing the same costume from the Ghost Rider. Oh my god! <laughs> so I was talking to. I was, wa- I was, I was talking to. Uh, so deep after oh the film. God. Yes. So wait, hold on. Wait, everybody, <laughs> slow the hell down. Everybody, all right. Sorry. So basically, the one of the big problems I had with this movie is when you have a film in which you have a guy named the Man in Black, okay, who is wearing black, and then you have the Gunslinger, also who is also there. wearing black, who also happens to it's be black. black. <laughs> I get I, I can see people getting confused because the the, the posters for this movie the, the ad campaign was god awful. I have never seen a, a worse ad campaign. And then basically, I ba- when I saw the Gunslinger for the first time, I saw Idris Elba's character from Ghost Rider Two. He looks exactly the same. I just googled pictures and it really is. <laughs> He's exactly the same. And. You do not want to start off your Dark Tower cinematic universe with comparisons to Ghost Rider The Spirit of Vengeance. Okay? You do not... That's not a place that you want to be. No. Right? Um, Yeah. So there's no reason that costume should have been like that. It was like Blade Light. Yeah. You know? Like, Blade, it was cool. Matrix, it was cool. There's no reason for the gunslinger, like a Western-inspired mythology to be dressed in black 
God, it looks so like much leather. leather. Just so it's much leather, leather, right? It's like, all yeah. leather. black leather. It's like yeah. uh, you know, head to toe in leather. Knock knock. Neo wants his fucking costume back. <laughs> like uh, I was just, I was just disappointed with that. There are, there's fan art. When Idris Elba was cast, everybody was super excited. I was really excited. There's fan art of him wearing the hat. That's a big debate. Mm-hmm. Like. The fact that he's not wearing a hat. He's yeah. got a hat in the books. He loses them at some point, but, but he loses the hat at some point. But um, The horn? Does he have the horn in the movie? I never saw it. Uh, yeah, I didn't see it either. He had something on his back, but I don't... I think that was just another camel pack or something. For water. For water. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least it's functional, right? Yeah. And at least it wasn't black. Well, even so. if he did have the horn, it had no significance in the movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah, we can get more into that in, when we get into the spoilers. But then uh, contrast Elba's bored performance with Matthew McConaughey. What do you think of Matthew McConaughey? I think he is a little bit over the top. Yeah, <laughs> just like these guys are like nowhere near each other like, at he all. He is, yeah. and Matthew McConaughey is one of my favorite current actors. Sure, He's done yeah. some amazing stuff in the past few years. Sure, yeah. Um, so I was expecting him playing a badass. He's kind of, he's pretty, I think he was perfect for the role, but his performance left a lot to be desired. It was over the top, very inconsistent. Um, Did you notice he was just really sweaty all of the time? He's yeah. just like glistening, like he just like somebody really just like- Really orange. Yeah, like dipped him in Vaseline <laughs> and then like left him out in the sun. As a generally sweaty guy, I get it. <laughs> You know, and, and he's traveling around a lot. <laughs> he's wearing all black. Black absorbs heat. You know, it's tough. <laughs> You're generally sweating. Okay, so I'm sweating is, right now. This this is <laughs> not a guy lot, who's supposed enough. to be the man in black. You know, he's got that shadowy, cloaky kind of um, persona to him. Or he's supposed well, to. I mean, Instead, he's, he's just walking around so flamboyantly. Yeah, I mean, he's got like the deepest V neck I've ever seen. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. I, I see his I, navel. I, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty sure I saw some pubes on that. Like, he went... It goes straight down. All the way down. That guy... Um, I think he's having a tremendous amount of fun. And I don't I don't think uh, the performance was... I mean, I don't think it was really that... I think he's got some scenes that he plays really well. And we'll get into that in the spoilers. And there's scenes in this movie that I like. I just think, in general, it was the wrong feel for the, for the man in black. And again, that probably goes back to the director, really. Yeah. yeah. See, yeah. He, here's the thing. I'm actually on the other side of the fence with McConaughey's performance. And the reason being is, yes, he was over the top. But for fuck's sakes, I needed something like that in this film. Because it sure. was so goddamn black no. everywhere that at least his performance <clears throat> kind of was a little bit more exciting. There was a little bit more fun. To, and like you said, it looked like he was having fun with the Yeah, role. it looked like he was having fun. So I appreciated that. Whether it's the right tone for that that character in particular, I don't know because I haven't read those Sure, books. yeah. So, so we're I, coloring I'm, that. I'm, yeah. Exactly. So that, that's to hear it from somebody who hasn't seen it. So McConaughey, I'm kind of on board with. Yeah. Um, not kind of. I'm on board with. I did sure. enjoy his performance wholeheartedly. Other than that, I, to me, I don't think there was any other standout performances for me. That, no, you know what? The guy from Cabin in the Woods is randomly in it. Yeah, Fran Fran Kranz uh, or Kranz Kranz yeah. Fran oh, he's the guy who was uh, running the computer. He was, the, he was the, one of the henchmen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, like the man in black. <laughs> I don't like like, an, like that whole that whole place looked like Austin, pa- like Doctor Evil's like lair. That's exactly <laughs> what it looked like. Yeah, it was, the fake faces and all that nonsense. Yeah, yeah. Tom Taylor, the guy that played Jake, was actually he was okay. Oh, he was okay. He was good. Actually, yeah. I mean, for a child actor, him. he was quite yeah. he was quite good. Yeah, we didn't talk about him. No, he was good. Uh, he probably had the broadest. <laughs> I guess acting chops to show off in terms of what is like range. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, no, that's true. Like those other guys were pretty one note. Yeah, uh, that's true. pretty one dimensional yeah. character. I, I actually, job. actually, uh, I don't know who plays Jake's mom. I think, I think that she did a great job. She oh, did. That's not what I thought you were gonna say. <laughs> For some reason, the first time you get introduced to her, she walks into Jake's room, and f- the only thing that popped through my mind as soon as she drums, she, she opens the door. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> Hey, hey now, yeah. hey now, hey now. Um, um, your mom but no, she was actually she was actually, she was very good too. Yeah, yeah, I thought she was. I thought she did a lot with a small part. Yeah, and there's a particular scene in this movie that I did. I thought was really effective, and we'll get into that in spoilers. But yeah. so general feelings, I think all around the board, no likey, no likey. Um, Not at all. That's both from someone you know, Justin. You haven't read the books from Sadiq. You know, you've you've read the books. Either way. It missed the mark on both on both sides of it. Um, One more person I forgot to mention in the movie that was misused: Jackie or Haley. Yeah, what was that? I don't know, man. Uh-huh. He was just random henchman. Didn't get anything to do. Meanwhile, you've got 
like other henchmen that were put more prominently in the light and were useless. Yeah. They didn't do anything. I that that was a misuse of a good actor as well. I just that bugged me. Yeah. And yeah. then um what's the actor's name? Um uh, the gunslinger's father. Yep. The also president. completely yeah, completely misused. Yep. Uh, Dennis Dennis Haysbert? Oh yeah, that name That's the name, right? Yeah. 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 Dennis Haysbert, yeah. Um you know, he's in it for a couple of minutes and uh that scene, I I one of the things I'm I hate. I absolutely hated that scene. Mm. <laughs> like, yeah. like I did not like it at all. It was amateurishly shot. It was just like, it looked like a TV movie. Yeah, uh, that Agreed. particular scene. Yep. Uh, so, bad. which is really unfortunate because that relationship is an interesting one uh, between uh, the father Roland and the, the son. Father. Roland's right. father is Stephen. Yeah, Stephen Steven and, and Roland. Son of Stephen. Yeah. All right. Well, all right. So uh, maybe we'll we'll call it quits on the non-spoiler. Jump into the bonus round. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, so the bonus round today, uh, actually, so it is going to be a little related. Uh, I wanted to talk a little about the Marvel graphic novel series for the uh, the gun. Uh, sorry, uh, the Dark Tower. Mm-hmm. I don't, did you ever get a chance to read I still those? Haven't gotten to those? Oh, you yeah. should definitely check them out. Um, <clears throat> I in have them. Pr- in particular, uh, the Gunslinger Born is the first trade, and this was written. This is a long time ago. It was like two thousand five, I think, um, when it first came out. So it's a, it's a while back. Um, Hang on, I'm just loading it up here, which I should have had before. Apologies to mostly Justin, because he's probably going to be upset about this little pause. You son of a bitch. Um, Yeah, so The Gunslinger Born, uh, published 2007, not 2005. It's uh, written, essentially adapted by Peter David and Robin Firth, who is like, I believe Robin Firth is like Stephen King's like Dark Tower contextual person yeah whenever Stephen King's like oh I forgot what I wrote here and mm-hmm. like I'm writing for this character what what would he do here he goes to Robin Firth and is like hey um mm-hmm. do you know like he keeps he's the keeper of the mythology right. so Peter David being a prominent comic book writer uh writ- he wrote that 90s Aquaman with uh, with him losing his hand time and tide I think it was called yeah. that series yeah, yeah, yeah. and he, uh, Peter David's done a, 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 like his body of work is massive I just remember him for that because that, that's what I remember reading that when I was younger um and Jay Lee let's talk about Jay Lee's art I don't know if you've seen this book or seen any I've images gone from it. it yeah yeah it's a it's a Jay Lee look he's got a shtick okay Jay Lee is you can tell this guy's art from a mile away there is no place in this world that is that does not have a low hanging mist for Jay Lee. You can be in a gym, <laughs> working out. A DJ is playing, and there will be a <laughs> low hanging <laughs> ominous mist everywhere. Did you say a DJ? Yeah. <laughs> Haven't you been at a gym with, gym a, with a DJ? DJ? Yeah. <laughs> I was at LA Fitness once, and there was Just a live DJ. Continue. Are you serious? Yeah. Wow. Uh, okay. Yeah, I don't know. I thought it was a normal thing. That was the only time I ever went to the gym in my life. It's were colored only, my opinion. Were you the only person in that gym? No, there were a lot of people in there. And a DJ. Was it you? <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's the DJ thing? You just like run up to like the first 3.5 millimeter jack you could find. Just like, play. Play. <laughs> DJ Otto. <laughs> no, I, I, did, I wish I did that. I didn't. I couldn't listen to my own music because the DJ music was so loud. It was awful. <laughs> And low I promptly mist. left, yeah. Anyway, low-hanging mist everywhere, but his art is beautiful. His interpretation of the Dark Tower world, spot on. And uh, and when I say spot on, I mean it's an interpretation of the text, mm-hmm. but it's an interpretation that makes sense. It adds value to the text. Like, it, it makes sense. It takes the descriptions from the book and adapts them, and anything that's not described, it takes creative license with. And does a, does a wonderful job of keeping it all within the same universe and expanding on it. So this was my first introduction. In 2008, I actually read this story. And I had no knowledge of the Dark Towers. This is the first thing of the Dark Tower that I read. And the first six trades I have in hardcover, they're really fantastic. And, it, and uh, it's adapting... Uh, uh, the Gunslinger Born adapts Wizard in Glass. Oh, I see. Wholesale, almost. So Wizard in Glass, just for folks who, like, this is not a spoiler, it's actually a flashback, back to when Roland was younger. And you're, if you're listening to the, the first Dark Tower audiobook, he does have a little, he, he talks a little bit about his, his court. past, yeah. Yeah, Court and his yeah. teacher. Right. And Court is featured prominently in this story and tells him everything about, you know, how he, he wins his guns and all of that stuff. Great story, 
beautifully drawn and a really great introduction for people who don't know anything about the Dark Tower, right? I think it's a better introduction than the first fucking Dark Tower book because I think I maintain that book is awful. I, I, I slog to get through that thing. Um, but that's, I think, a, a, another podcast. But, uh, but yeah, I, I think it's a great introduction, great art. And Peter David manages to take the <coughs> language and adapt the language, the high speech, like do you ken it and like sigh and like long days and pleasant nights and all of this like great – really great like mythological stuff it puts it into every panel into that whether it's visual or whether it's written um it's really 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 well done it's basically the opposite of this film (laughs) so if you didn't like the film all right and you don't want to jump into a you know large uh a large book because you don't know if you're going to like it because that film has colored (coughs) your expectation let's say Mm -hmm. Read The Gunslinger Born. The first trade, it's not very long. It's a self-contained story. So if you're, if at the end of it, you're like, hey, I don't like it, peace out. You can peace out. Um, but I, I guarantee that if you manage to get through that thing till the end, you're going to want to know what happens next. And you're probably going to want to know what happens in the uh, Dark Tower novels themselves. Right. It seems like they're actually converting the entire series into... Uh... Yeah, so it looks like, if I understand what they're doing correctly, they did the Gunslinger Born first, which is um, the uh, Wizard, and Wizard and Glass, and then they actually go into what happens after Wizard and Glass in yeah. that time period when he's younger. Then it finally gets to the fall of Gilead, the Battle, the battle of Jericho Hill. These are actually like books, you can see right. them here. Yeah. The Fall of Gilead, Battle of Jer- Battle Jer- but when it goes into the Gunslinger, the journey begins. That's I think it started book. adapting the first book. Yeah. So I actually plan on going back and reading all of the uh, the graphic novels because I think it's a great companion okay. for for the book. So I would get I would highly recommend like if you're Justin, if you're getting into it, jump in. You know, jump in. You can read them both at the same time. You're not going to lose a lot. In fact, I think you're going to gain a lot. But just okay. by just by um, getting the, those visuals like along with the story that's being told. Cool. So yeah, no, it's a it's a great book. You guys should uh, you know listeners should definitely get into it, regardless of how you feel about the movie. Regardless, it's a it's a it's it's and, what and the it, movie could have been. If you didn't like the movie, there's probably a lot more in this than you thought. Yeah, there would be. Or yeah, I don't know. It's, well, no, it's it's it's. It's just a better introduction yeah. to, to the mythology, and it's a great book, like on its own. Yeah. Um, it and uh, and yeah, so that's that's pretty that's pretty much it. Uh, you guys should go out and pick it up. I'm pretty sure Comicsology has it, and uh, if not, go to your comic book store and take a leap of faith. That's it for episode 5.1. Stay tuned for episode 5.2, where we go into the Dark Tower film and all the spoilery goodness. Till next time, folks, take care and cheers. Cheers.